Hi, we are going to do a problem where you are asked to decide if a precipitate will form. Uh, let's read this question together and then we'll dissect it. It says, will strontium sulfate form a precipitate with 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 molar strontium ion? Okay, so there's a concentration of the strontium, strontium ion. If sodium sulfate, that's a solid, is added them, so that the sulfate ion is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4. And we have a KSP strontium sulfate is 2.4 times 10 to the minus 7. Now lots of words and lots of numbers and I know that your head can start to swim. Here's the key. You want to picture what's going on. Actually visualize what is it that's happening and from that you'll be able to figure out how to do the problem. So we have the strontium sulfate or it wants to know if this will form and precipitate, if this will become a solid. Um, so right away I think okay let's write down our equation for this. We've got strontium sulfate solid is going to be an equilibrium with the strontium ion plus oops, the sulfate ion plus the sulfate ion and these are aqueous. So that's really what it's asking. Um, am I going to be at equilibrium where this is perfectly saturated? Um, is it going to be that um, I have less than the saturated amount and so I only have ions or will I have more ions than what I need that it actually goes in reverse and it forms a solid which is the precipitate. Um, so that's what they're asking about that particular compound when they say will it form a precipitate. We're living with this equation. It's that dissociation of the strontium sulfate and the KSP on this is the 3.4 times 10 to the minus 7. So it tells us really reactant favored since it's less than one. It only tiny, tiny, tiny dissociates, only a little bit. When you have um, this substance, if I were to put it in water, only a little bit would break apart. Um, now, I'm going to draw what we begin with. It says that we have 2.5 times 10 to the uh, minus 4 molarity, uh, that molar concentration of the strontium ion. So they're telling us in this solution, you've got strontium ion. Okay, so we have these strontium ions floating in that solution. And now what we're going to do is add this solid. So I'm going to add the sodium sulfate to this. Now you've memorized anything that has sodium in it is 100% soluble, 100% dissociates. So when we put this in here, you're going to have a sodium ion which won't react with anything because it's totally soluble. It will be a spectator ion. And check it out, we have the sulfate ion. So because this has a KSP, I know we can add just a little bit of that sulfate ion and it won't react. It will be ions. But once we eat, reach equilibrium, perfect saturation, where I have the maximum number of sulfate, maximum number of strontium, if I add any more than that, it's going to reverse and it will be a solid. Um, so they're telling us that they're adding enough of this sodium sulfate so that the sulfate ion is 2.5 times 10 to the minus four. And they're saying, hey, is it going to precipitate? Um, so this is really at this snapshot, at this moment, what does it look like? We don't know if we're at equilibrium or not. So that means we're at QSP. I'm at, remember QSP is some moment um, and it can be other than equilibrium. KSP is exactly equilibrium, perfect saturation. QSP is what's the snapshot at this moment. And it could be um, that we're unsaturated, it could be we're at perfect saturation, or it could be that we're at precipitation. Now, if that is new for you, go to my playlist on solubility KSP and watch the video that compares QSP and KSP if you need a little bit of help with that. So we're at QSP, this is a snapshot, and I want to identify really where are we at in comparison to KSP. So QSP is the same equilibrium expression, products minus reactants, or divided by reactants. So we have our products, strontium ion times the sulfate ion, divided by reactants, it's a solid, so it's just one. These are both the coefficient of one, so their exponents are also one. So let's go ahead and plug in what we have. At this moment, I have 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4 and 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4. So here's the concentration of the strontium and there's the concentration of the sulfate. 
When we multiply this, we get 6.25, 0.25 times 10 to the minus eight. Remember that's QSP. That's at this very specific moment. At this point, all we do is compare QSP and KSP. So we are going to have 6.25 times 10 to the minus eight, and this is my QSP. Let's go ahead and look at KSP. The KSP is 3.4 times 10 to the minus seven. Well, this number is smaller. QSP is less than KSP. Remember, products over reactants. That's what our equilibrium expression is, right? Products over reactants. So if QSP is smaller, that means um, that uh, if this is smaller, it's got to become a bigger number. To get a bigger number, if I'm looking at this quotient, it means we need more products, which means this is unsaturated. I don't have enough products if this is unsaturated. And again, I have a full discussion on QSP compared to KSP, saturated, unsaturated equilibrium. Watch that video on the equilibrium or on the solubility playlist. But because QSP is less than KSP, it means I can dissolve more. This is an unsaturated solution. So there's my answer, unsaturated, no precipitate. It means we could actually dissolve more. And sometimes that's how the question will be asked. It will say, is this an equilibrium? Um, if it's not, can more be dissolved? Or will something precipitate? So different ways that they could ask that question. It all revolves around, at this moment, how does this solution compare to, so QSP, how does it compare to KSP? In this case, because QSP is less than KSP, we have um, fewer products than what we need to reach saturated equilibrium. Um, it means it's unsaturated, no precipitate. Okay, if you need more help with this, I have an ex a second example for you on the solubility playlist. Have a good day. You're doing great. Thank you.